everybody. Welcome to the school blog. I'm Lee. Today, what we're going to look at are some of the other typical things that people have trouble with. I've been explaining this this very week. When do we use apostrophe S? When do we use of? Maybe, if we have time, we'll look into some compound nouns. So these are three different things that people always get confused with. Commonly, other languages, maybe Spanish, Latin languages, use of quite a lot. Yeah, the dog of my sister, the book of my friend, of, 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 lots of ofs. The leg of the table, the end of the film. People, especially in Latin languages, like Spanish or maybe Italian, often think, oh, I can just use of. No, um, of only has one particular meaning in English. It can be used as a preposition with verbs, that's something different. The main distinction is between position or possession. But in English, it's only one of those. We only use of for position, not possession. Possession is something else. So this is what we always have in English, the apostrophe S. People get it confused. Oh, what's the order? Is it the subject's object or the object of the subject? Absolutely. You have to have the subject first. The subject's the most important. Of course, in English, you know, oh, we always think, yeah, I'm the most important, right? The subject. Well, you have this individualist society. Let's start off by talking about the main uses of the apostrophe S. Let's imagine, that, well, I've got it right here. So. What's this? What, what is this? You know, it, it's a pen, isn't it? It's a pen. Who possesses the pen? I possess the pen. It's my pen. So look, you've got the same structure there. Whose pen? My pen. Well, imagine we replace the pronoun my with the subject. Whose pen? My pen. Lee's pen. So it's actually a lot easier this way. If you say my pen and then you say the pen of Lee, you're changing the structure. It's actually more difficult that way. It's easier just to say, my, the subject, pen, object, or Lee's, the subject, pen, object. The pen belongs to me. So don't touch my pen. So, of course, if you say, the pen of Lee, not really English. Sounds epic. The pen of Lee. It sounds like an epic pen, like a, a magic pen. You know, the pen of Lee. Sounds like a, a film. So it may be used to make it sound epic, big, exciting, but it's just a normal pen. Yeah. So you may find this, yeah, the Lord of the Rings, yeah, it's big, epic. It's not, you know, the, the rings possess a lord, rings lord, you know, no, uh, the lord has a ring, perhaps, yeah, it would be, you know, the lord's ring, but that sounds too normal, the epic, lord of the rings. Another example, Who's this? Uh, this is uh, Elizabeth. Where does she live? She lives in a house, like everyone else. We all live in houses. Whose house? It's uh, Elizabeth's house. It's her house. Her house, Elizabeth's house. Um, so Elizabeth is the subject. We are her subjects, literally. Elizabeth's house. So always think who the subject is, because that has to go first. But if you, if you just think of the pronouns, my house, your house, his house, it's exactly the same order. One more, one more example. So, you know, my friend has got a sister and she has got a house. So what we say is the house of the sister of my friend is very long, very long. So you get this repetition of of. Right, it's my friend's sister's house. My friend's sister's house. Friend's sister's house. It flows. It's just nice and eloquent and short. It's to the point. But again, if you think, who is the subject? The subject is my friend. My friend's sister's house. We're talking about the sister which my friend has. If we just say, whose house? It's her house. Whose friend? My friend. It's always important to think, who is, who is the subject? Think in terms of the subject pronouns. Of course, there's lots of examples of this. We're not going to go through them all. Here's a list of some of them. You know, have a look at these, pause the video, look at them in more detail. If we think of yeah, animals, whose food? It's food, the cat's food. So again, it's the same structure in all three cases. You will find that, you know, it's food. Yeah, the cat, his food, her food. If we don't know the, the sex of the, the animal, we tend to say it. It kind of explains all of the kind of 
disregard of animal cruelty in the world because the language itself considers and makes us think of animals as objects. One more thing, whose book is her book? Is Jane's book, Jane Austen, Jane Austen's book. We could put that into the plural, you know, Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, what's the other one? Sense and Sensibility, more than one book. So we could say Jane's books, don't confuse the apostrophe S, Jane's possession with the standard S, just plural, so Jane's books. But what if Jane had some sisters? I don't know if Jane Austen had sisters, but there's the Brontes, the Bronte sisters, right? So let's imagine the Bronte sisters have got some books. So be the Bronte sisters' books. So how would you distinguish Charlotte's books, the Bronte sisters' books? It's just the position of the apostrophe. My sister, apostrophe S, books. I've got a sister with some books. But if it's my sister's apostrophe and then the books, then you know it's my sister's plural my, all of my sisters have got some books. They share books. You know, very nice. So again, the Bronte sisters' books. You know, they, 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 I don't know if they wrote the books together. You know, they've all got books. They share them. It's the family books. It's good enough. This is possession, not to be confused with position or p position spelt. You know, the functions can be confused, but also uh, the, the sound. Possession, position. Position is where we use of in English. It could be positioned in time or positioned in space. So you've got those two things. So again, we're talking about Jane Austen's books, the Bronte sisters' books, but where are these books? You know, I've not physically shown you them. Where are they? So I've not shown you the books because uh, the, the books, are they in the room's corner? Does the room possess a corner? No. No corner, no room. The room... You, know, you need to have corners in order to create a room. So, no corner, no room. The room doesn't possess the corner. The, the corner is a position within the room. Okay. So this is where you get the other forms. You know, it's not the room's corner, it's the corner of the room. So that's where you get the of in English. It's in the middle of the room, at the back of the room, at the front of the room, positioned. So it could be in, positioned in space, or could be positioned in time. Let's think of films. Hard to think of a film that everyone's probably seen. Maybe Star Wars, The Wars of the Stars. When does Leia get captured by Darth Vader? Anyone remember when that happens? It happens, the film's beginning is a position. So we say at the beginning of the film. Think, think at for location, at hotmail.com, at home, at the beginning of the film. At is also a preposition for location, position, but it can be located in time or space. Uh, when does Luke meet Han Solo? Maybe it's not the perfect example, I've not seen the film for years, but more or less he meets him in the middle of the film, in the middle of the room, in the middle of the film. Of course we all know what happens at the end of the film, not the, uh, the film's ending, that's why you have the end, at the end of the film. What happens? Yeah, death stop, you know, you go, bam. Okay, so that's possession and position. So don't confuse those two things. We only use of for position. Unless, of course, you want to be epic. We could make a list, typical kind of forms. Uh, here's a list. Boom, 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 boom. It's like Star Wars, isn't it? The, the credits. Pause this. Look at it later. So the other thing we're going to look at is, of course, compound nouns. So we've got other languages, maybe French or something, probably would use of. But you have to think about fundamentally what is the object. Compound nouns explain what type. I've got a card, but, OK, it's a card. We know it is a card, but what type of card? So, you know, what's this? Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? What type of card? Yes, it's a birthday card. Christmas card, birthday card. I've not got any Christmas cards at the moment. Uh, you can wish me happy birthday in the comments if you like. So, what type of card? Uh, what's this? Uh, that's my... That's a, that's a library card, isn't it? But, again, we could ask what type of library card. It's a plastic library card. We could put an opinion. Those type of adjectives usually go at the beginning. Very useful library card. Useful plastic library card. Notice the opinion adjectives go at the beginning because the most fundamental, the most permanent adjectives go near the end. It's a library card. That's the most fundamental part. Um, 
So what's this? I'm not going to show you the credit number. Again, what type of card is it? It's a credit card. What type of credit card? A Visa credit card? What type of Visa credit card? You could continue forever. It's a plastic Visa credit card. An expensive Visa credit card. Okay, so again, we avoid all this of, 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 uh, it's a card, of credit, of plastic, of, 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 a Visa credit card. So this is a compound noun, okay? This is where we use uh, compound nouns. So of course, you may think, with some other examples, if I just show you this, what's that? You may think, oh, the chair has got a leg, therefore... It's the chair's leg. But if you think, if I cut off those legs, it's not a chair, a broken object on the floor. So no leg, no chair. So the, the, the leg is an integral part of the chair. So it's not a, the chair's leg, and it's not the leg of the chair. It's a chair leg, it's a compound noun. We're describing the type. It's a leg, we know it's a leg, but what type of leg? A chair leg. So we're not describing the position, we're not saying who possesses the leg. With humans, it's different. What is it? A human? Yeah, we could say it's a human leg if we were talking scientifically. It's a human leg. That's a compound noun. It's a human leg. However, if I was to say whose leg, we could say it's my leg. So Lee's leg. So we wouldn't say the chair's leg, but we could say it's Lee's leg. Your leg, my leg. Because again, we're subjects, we think of ourselves as you know, living things. Okay, so my leg, Lee's leg. So, a couple more examples of compound nouns. So, you know, what am I wearing? I'm wearing a shirt. But again, we could ask what type. The compound noun is describing the type. It's a cotton shirt. Very nice shirt, right? It's an unironed shirt. What else? It's a white shirt. But again, what order would you put these in? Think of permanence. What's more permanent, white or cotton? I can't change the cotton, but I could colour it, you know, I could dye it a different colour, so it'd be a white cotton shirt. But if it's nice, that's my opinion. You might think it's horrible. Uh, so we'd say it's a nice white cotton shirt. You're always describing what type. I've got red hair. Again, you could say it's red hair, short hair, straight hair, clean. Yeah. It's clean. How clean? That's almost opinion, isn't it? So you could say, uh, yeah, clean, straight, long red hair, or short red hair. So again, think of the, the order. It's short, not really permanent, but red. Okay, I could change the colour, but the, the colour is more permanent than the length, because hair grows naturally. Unless you go to the barber's shop every day, it's going to grow. Uh, hopefully this helps to clarify a few points, distinguish between compound nouns, apostrophe x, and of. That's all for today. Any comments, of course, if you want me to make another video about something else, of course, let me know. Seeing you. It's, uh, it's a card. Let me get my card.